whales, dolphins, orcas and porpoises are cetaceans, a large family of marine mammals. Since prehistoric times, men have heard the whales singing. Whales gave birth to the legends of sea monsters and unicorns. They have a place in marine myths and stories from all times. They originated the siren song. Even today, those who experience the proximity of these songs claim to feel lost and disorientated. There are two branches in the family, Odontoceti, that began swimming faster and developed sharp teeth, and Misticeti, that grew up in size and gave up their teeth for a beard of corneal tissue, similar to our nails, the baleen, that allows them to trap their food. To this last group belongs the whale that comes to our base. The humpback whale, or Yubarta, is one of the world's most widespread misticeti. It lives in coastal waters, in the cold streams of the northern and southern hemispheres, migrating to warmer latitudes to breed and give birth. They come to our waters at the end of November, and sometimes as late as the middle of December. After three to four months, when the pregnant females have given birth, Others have become pregnant and newborns can withstand the return trip, they go back until the next season. They arrive in groups to the cool waters of the bay. Among the females there are many ready to give birth. You can observe the females escaping a crowd of bulls as they chase and compete for them. Among the bulls there are some that haven't reached their adult size or maturity. Yet, they follow the tournament with enthusiasm. Groups from 2 to 20 chase after a single female, performing diverse acrobatics that serve to establish dominance. The tournament lasts for hours. The size of the group fluctuates when smaller bulls abandon the match or with the arrival of new candidates. They swim hastily to then submerge and surface again to flap their flukes or flippers against the surface of the water boisterously. They also bridge, jump, charge or do feints, brushing and pushing each other violently. These bumps and frictions leave scars caused by the barnacles that cover their opponent's bodies. Violence of courtships ends when one of the bulls is able to mount the female. Later, it isn't rare to see couples swimming gently rubbing heads or body parts as if they were caressing one another. We have seen these couples remain together for as much time as they spent in the period. Some scientists claim that these couples might not be the same as the ones that mated and they call them escorts.
after a female gives birth, as the offspring learns how to swim and dive, there aren't any males around the mother and the calf. Shortly after they're born, the babies remain for long intervals at the surface, disappearing only for short periods of time underwater. In just a few hours, the calf grows in size and acquires its skills. When the calf begins swimming, the escort returns. It's common to see groups composed of a mother, the calf, and the escort. Later, when the domineering males have finished chasing females on heat, the groups return. You can see numbers of adults swimming next to the mothers and young whales. Although many, as scientists claim, also swim by themselves. It is said that the humpback has little social organization, that they're loners or live in small groups during certain periods that last but for a few days. Yet in our bay, it's not rare to see the same groups together, especially after the mating takes place and later as they swim with the calves that get bigger and stronger. We have observed many of these groups sticking together for almost the whole time they spend in these waters, and very close bonds between mothers and their calves as the years pass and they come back. Scars and mutilations bear witness to attack by orcas, sharks or boats propellers. The majority of ancient cultures venerated these mammals. Others hunted them for their rich blubber, their skin and bones. Whales were hunted close to extinction because of their fat, their baleen, the ivory in their teeth and the ambar that forms in their liver. Since the Middle Ages, whaling turned into a highly productive industry. The oil made from their blubber was used as fuel for lamps and stoves. But an interesting thing is that since then and until the 20th century, their baleen was used as an indispensable article in the manufacture of the dress and adornment of ladies and gentlemen of the court and high social spheres. The baleen was also used to make whips, umbrellas, fishing canes, and many other things that in our days are made of plastic. Fleets began killing them in the cool waters of the tropics and up and down the polar zones, resulting in the extinction of several species in the Atlantic. In subsequent years and until the recent past, the ships and their weapons improved becoming floating slaughterhouses. As the world would look the other way, the whales were vanishing. When they dive, the fluke slowly arches until it disappears underwater. This gave origin to their name, because as they dive, it looks like a humpback. They lift their heads and their shoulders out of the water and look turning in 180 degrees, as if trying to see what's up there. Then slowly, they sink back in. Among couples, one will be floating as another one comes out to rub his head gently against the other, as if they were caressing one another. Loners surface on their side or with their bellies up, hitting the water with their flukes and flippers. They elongate their fins against the sky and crash them against the water in great commotion. Scientists think that these tail flapping are part of the courtship ritual. Yet we have seen these behaviors after that period and even when they are completely alone.
Whales whack their head against the surface in what could be a restrained jump or breach. The humpback is probably the highest jumper of the baleen whales. It is capable of launching its 40-ton body out of the water. All through the season, whales jump. After a few weeks, the calves start jumping too. They launch two-thirds of their body and sometimes all of it out of the water, turning in the air and falling on their backs or their side. Jumping can go along for several hours, during which they don't seem to tire. Humpbacks are the most vocal whales of all. For hours and days they cast cries, moans, while others articulate low and long sounds, repeating diverse sequences and melodies. It is assumed that their singing plays a role in courtship, yet observers claim to have heard them in absence of others, concluding that they, like us, like to sing for the pleasure of it. It's an active predator that hunts for creel and small fish, swallowing them directly or stunning them with blows from their flippers. An extremely original fishing technique is when in collaboration they swim around the fish, blowing air forming a net of bubbles. The fish remain enclosed and from underneath the whales devour them. This net of bubbles can reach up to 100 feet. The collaboration of several individuals is needed to use this technique. One more example of their coordinated minds and their capacity to work as a team. In their yearly migration, they average 25,000 kilometers. Population has risen from 20,000 in 1966 to over 40,000 in our days. They swim close to the boats with no fear. This has made them the perfect target for a new kind of whalers, whale watchers. In the last three decades, whale watching has become very popular. Like other cetaceans, mothers are very protective over their calves. They swim between them and the boats or keep still in the presence of ships. Boat captains have not yet fully understood their new role. They compete for the first row and tire the calves and their mothers needlessly. As we stated before, when the babies are born, as they attain swimming skills and strength, mothers have to hold still in the surface longer. Sightings, although less spectacular, are more frequent and it is then that the boats approach them too much and too quickly. Laws rarely reflect the reality of the behavior of whales. The observations by experts are made in a different context in daily life, but in the case of whale watching, it is the whales that break the rules and approach the boats.
and these images will show a humpback acting in a very particular way. She rubs against the boat trying to see the people in it. Even if this conduct is very common with the Baja California Greys, with their cousins, the humpbacks in our bay, it's a rarity. Contrary to the attention greys get, there has been little interest and approach to these other whales by Mexican scholars and officials. They weigh an average of 40 tons. Slightly bigger than the males, females reach up to 18 meters. The largest ever found measured 60 feet. Her flippers were 18. Since 1967, they have been a protected species. Today, it's estimated that there are little more than 40,000 individuals. Its large upper body, the fifth in size among the baleen whales, it's mostly black or dark gray, while their lower body is normally white or light gray with spots. Small protuberances formed by parasites cover their head and their inferior jaw. Its flukes depict undulations, diverse designs and spots. This differ from each individual serving as marks to identify them. Their flipper equals a third part of their body in length. This is much more than any other species in the order Cetacea. It gives them more maneuverability. It serves to regulate its temperature during the migration periods and they use it as a net to enclose the fish they eat and maybe to embrace each other, which at times they appear to do. When the humpback surfaces, it expels air as high as 18 feet through its blowhole. As it leaves its lungs, the hot air condenses into vapor that falls back into the water in a thick stream. The characteristic baleen is a corneal production of tissue similar to our nails. It grows in the shape of a beard and as they expel water through their mouth, retains the catch. Humpbacks have 270 to 400 baleen disposed on each side of their mouth. Females give birth every two or three years, but they are able to do it every year. The period of gestation of the calf is 11 months. At birth, the calf measures as much as 14 feet and weighs over 700 kilos. He's nursed by his mother for a year. For the first six months, it is his only source of food. Later, they alternate nursing any capture the young can get by themselves. The calves leave their mothers at the beginning of their second year when they reach a 27-foot size. On their fifth year, the juveniles attain sexual maturity and a little after that, their adult size.
they live as much as 40 or 50 years. It is believed that the ancestors of whales at the end of the era of dinosaurs could have been rodents or maybe other small mammals more similar to hypos. But considering fossil findings about 65 million years ago, the great grandfather of the whale left the earth to swim into the sea. It seems unbelievable that these animals were able to survive for millions of years and only in the last 400 they were killed close to extinction. The disappearance of the most commercial species, the fact that the women outdated corsets, and the discovery of synthetic oils diminish the rate at which whales were disappearing. The world got busy with war. After World War II and the atrocities that culminated in Hiroshima, in most of the Western countries, a world environmentalist, pacifist community is born. The discovery by a group of scientists that whales could sing, and also the recognition of their coordinated activities, made the media focus on them, gaining the sympathy of the people. In 1967, many countries formed a coalition and decreed the prohibition of whale hunting. Soon after, Argentina and Mexico were among the first countries to establish sanctuaries for whales in their territorial waters. Despite these efforts, using as an excuse research or tradition, some nations continue to kill whales today. The unsuppressed need of man to dominate nature and the beast has placed these cetaceans in public parks and stages of entertainment. They are used for research and other studies, but also for commercial ends. With very few exceptions, their recruitment is a one-way ticket. Even if they have been successful in keeping them alive and apparently in good health, they live under constant stress and lose their abilities to survive in open waters. In the recent past, all traditions that mediated between man and animals have been lost. We are destroying our oceans without realizing that there lies the source for our own survival. We do not perceive the urgency of the role we must play. We must each actively give back to our planet, giving at least as much as we take out. It seems we haven't been able to learn the lessons from our past and keep marching blind into the future. It is time for creativity and resistance. The laws for the protection of our environment and animal species have to be revised and respected by governments and international organizations. Nature, politics, sports, sex, people have been turned into the spectacle needed to stop looking in depth Men's war against whales is not over. What is hurting them is also hurting us. Pollution, climate change, the destruction of marine habitat. The conservation of whales and other species, the safeguard of beings and things, the conservation principle in itself, it's not important for a thing or a being in particular, but for the sense of caring or protecting, which is a human feeling.
protecting other species and our habitat is an exercise for our own well-being and survival.